Okay, so now that we have the operating system installed here in Hyper-V, let's go ahead and um, log into it. And the, one of the first things we're going to need to do is install the the drivers and everything, so I can get to get this thing on the network and we can get it to see the the network card. So let me get logged in. And what I want to do is come in here and attach uh, the Windows ISO that we use to install the Hyper-V drivers and everything. Uh, sorry about that. And hit OK. Now let's go ahead and mount that in and get this stuff installed. So, and let's go ahead and get in there. Just out, so we want to manage the rail. S363 here, what we want to get into. Uh, depending on your version, of course, pick the right one. Um, and once we're in here, we just want to do the install SH. So this will go ahead and install the um, all the drivers and everything that you're going to need so that we can get the networking set up and yeah, get this on the network, um, essentially. Can't do anything without the network. Okay, so we can see that the lens integration services have been installed here and that we are going to need to reboot. So, again, this is due to the fact that we're using Hyper-V. If you're using VMware or some other one, you may not have to go through this process. Um, so let's go ahead and reboot. All right, so let's log in again here. Now that it's rebooted, uh, let's check and make sure that the um, Hyper-V components are running. And we can see that everything's set up okay here. So uh, what we want to do now is set up the, the networking piece. So if we check in here we'll see that um, there is no no uh, Ethernet zero that's already configured and running so let's go ahead and get the network piece going and the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to networking this this up. I'm also going to add the host name in here. Uh, CLD, SDK, and GMT01. Right? Yeah. Okay, exit out of there. And then. Go ahead and set up the config file for the adapter. Go here. And you can use whichever editor um, you like to, just use a BI for now. Um, so let's go ahead and configure Ethernet 0. Uh, I can type. And this to 
I'm going to set a static IP address on this. File. Let's go into the resolve.conf. You'll see I'm using mostly IP addresses here, so I'm not even using this. But um, in production, you're going to want to use uh, your DNS. And I think we're good there. Um, okay, let's let's bring it the adapter. See what we get here. Okay, so we got came up. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can hit the gateway. All right, and service network restart just to make sure we don't get any errors when we restart the networking. Okay, um, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in Etsy host uh, this actual system information here. And if this seems like it's a little bit of work, um, it actually is. Which is why you want to have a, you know, set this stuff up once in a template. And then once you have the, the template set up and you deploy it, it's a lot easier. Less things to change. Templates or an automated uh, deployment process is sweet. Um, I already know the the host names and IPs that I'm going to use. So what I'm going to do is put those in here as well. Um, I don't. I should be using um, DNS, of course, but for the sake of the lab here and just being lazy, I'm going to static everything here in the, in the host file. done um, now that the network is up uh, what we want to do of course the first thing is go ahead and, and update the operating system uh, we're going to go ahead and do a yum update why switch so it'll just breeze through do, do the installation of every all the packages that are been old and 
once this is done, there's a little more configuration we need to do before we actually can get to inst installing CloudStack. So I'll kind of fast forward through this process here. I'm um, sure if you've seen it, you've seen it. Uh, but this is going to take a little while. Okay, so now that the virtual machine um, has been upgraded. Okay, so before we reboot the system, let's go ahead and configure the SE Linux settings. And we're going to edit the SE Linux config file. And what we want to do is change the settings here from enforcing to permissive. And now that's that done, we'll go ahead and reboot. 